Hello there, I'm a university lecturer here in the UK teaching biology related subjects. Uh, today I'd like to talk a bit about diabetes, talk about sugar, the role of sugar, uh, the hormone that uh, that's involved with diabetes and some of the complications that come about because of diabetes. If you find this video useful, uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, it's always helpful to me personally when people leave comments behind. It's a, it's a way of uh, improving the channel. And uh, please pass it on to your friends or anyone that you might think might find it useful. Right then, let's get down to it then. Okay, so uh, in terms of hopefully what you should be getting out of this uh, session um, is we'll, we'll talk about what diabetes is. Um, we'll talk about the importance of sugar. Okay, how sugar stimulates the production of this hormone that you people have obviously heard of called insulin. Okay, uh, we look at uh, how insulin works to manage sugar levels in the blood and uh, when diabetes is mismanaged people develop symptoms okay so we'll talk about the symptoms i will also try to explain why people develop these symptoms first of all before i talk about uh, in any detail about diabetes let's just look at some of the the numbers here okay now uh, this is from the world health organization this this top number here okay so at the moment well as of 2019 there was about 422 million people worldwide with diabetes okay and that's projected to increase in the next nine years to 578 million okay so it's a it's a growing problem um and uh, by all the literature and all the information that's out there regarding diabetes, it still continues to grow very quickly. Okay, so when we break this down and look at individual countries, we can see that um, China here, okay, it constitutes about a quarter of the total worldwide population that have diabetes. Okay, that, that this was as of 2019. Okay, so and then. As you, as you look down, you can see that there's really populous countries such as India have 77 million. Okay, um, Another one in South Asia, Pakistan, has about uh, just under 30 million. And USA has about 34 million. And you can see um, that the numbers decrease. But this, by obviously, by is, is no means um, an exhaustive list. But it just gives you some of the, the, the bigger players when it comes to diabetes. Okay, so we we can see now that it's diabetes is a big problem, and the amount of money that is spent all around the world um, to manage to help people manage this condition is 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 um, astronomical. Okay, uh, right then. So let's get down to it. And so diabetes, what is it? Okay, we know that diabetes is a chronic disease. So what does that mean when we say chronic? Okay, uh, chronic basically means it refers to it being a long term condition. Okay, so it is a long-term condition. When people have diabetes, um, they tend to have it forever, um, for the rest of their lives. So it's a, it's a chronic condition. Now, when I say for the rest of their lives, um, it is reversible, okay, to some extent in some people. Okay, so um, there are plenty. There's plenty of literature out there indicating that, uh, not indicating, but showing quite definitively that uh, this disease can be reversed especially when, when we talk about diabetes there's two types type 1 and type 2 and we'll come back to that in, in a second or two but uh, the biggest uh, the biggest player is type 2 diabetes it makes up about 90 percent of all diabetic cases type 2 does okay 10 percent is the remaining uh, type 1 diabetes right then so what is diabetes then so that's what it is uh, it's also a disease that results in the impairment of sugar management. Like I keep saying this word management. Uh, diabetes is no longer um, a, a, a disease that uh, can, that needs to cause many problems. Okay, We have enough treatments now. We have enough uh, information by which we can actually manage people's lives that have diabetes so, so that they can live um, an, a normal average uh, life than everybody else lives and coming back to the reversibility of um, of diabetes is type 2 diabetes in which it can be reversed in uh, in some in some patients 
okay uh, type one type one is much more difficult to reverse because um, the uh, the insulin system uh, that helps to manage sugar levels is is not working from from the beginning so it usually occurs at the at the beginning of life okay so um, it's usually when your system doesn't work okay and has a bigger sort of genetic component to it so we need to talk about sugar so when, when we talk about diabetes i think we have to talk about sugar okay and i'm gonna i'm gonna spend a few slides here talking about um, how sugar is metabolized how important sugar is to our to our survival okay so the thing is the biggest problem is, is that sugar tastes nice okay it's sweet and it tastes and it tastes awesome to a large extent it's addictive okay anything that makes us feel good um, can be potentially addictive right <clears throat> sugars the thing with sugars is that it's, the, the reason why they're addictive, why our why our bodies want more of sugars, is because they are such great for energy. Okay, sugars are is your preferred choice for energy. We can use fats and proteins for energy as well, but in terms of a quick supply of energy, sugars are fantastic. Because sugars are, are great for energy. So, so once you have a taste for sugar sugars can be addictive and because sugars are, are so addictive and <clears throat> your body then starts to crave sugars for energy so if if there's something in the fridge that tastes sweet once you see it your body wants to eat it okay and <clears throat> so everyone has a sweet to, sweet tooth to some extent some more than others okay and eating something sweet makes you feel good okay and it makes you feel good because your brain releases this chemical here. This is it's called a neurotransmitter, dopamine. Okay, and <clears throat> anything that makes you feel good it makes you feel good because your brain releases dopamine. Okay. And feeling good is addictive. Okay. And because <clears throat> sugar makes you feel good, sugar becomes addictive. Okay. And your body craves sugars okay, because your body recognizes how valuable sugars are in terms of its in terms of their calorific value. So because sugars are high in calorific value, okay, your the human being's long term survival actually depends on calories. So anything that's high in calories, such as sugars, okay, your body recognizes as something uh, you should consume more of okay now the problem really is is not so much that sugar is high in calorific value and it, and it tastes wonderful okay it's because before many many hundreds of years ago uh, not not even many hundred years ago even about 100 years ago perhaps okay getting calories used to be very hard okay many people all around the world um would sometimes it, it would be days before they would have a, a good meal your body is designed in the sort of long-term context of survival okay and knowing that uh, a meal is not easy to obtain okay so now things that, the thing is meals are everywhere sweet tasting good <clears throat> meals are everywhere okay the big problem really is that your bodies were never designed to take advantage of uh, <clears throat> such plentiful calories, okay? And this is what gives rise to diabetes, okay? So we know that sugar is <clears throat> very useful for energy, okay? Because it can provide the body with, it's, it's, it can provide the body with an easy supply of energy, okay? It's much more easier to extract energy from sugar than it is from fats and proteins, okay? Now, all your cells are performing thousands of reactions every second. So we're looking at why sugar is very useful. Okay. Um, in your cells, <clears throat> your cells are performing thousands of reactions every second. Now, these reactions require energy. Okay. And that energy, uh, it can come from anywhere. Okay. And the fact that sugar is, uh, is an easier supply of energy. Okay. That's why sugars are so important. Okay. 
So all the cells in your body are performing these reactions every second, and, and, they, and they number thousands and thousands of, of reactions, and most of them require energy. Okay, so most of them require energy, and therefore you you're, you need a constant supply of energy. So then it stands to reason that a quick supply of energy is much more beneficial. Okay, now your body controls how much energy through sugar is available at any one time. Okay, now your cells require energy all the time. Okay, but they they they're not uh, they're not over reliant on too much energy. Okay, a little bit of energy is 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 enough is sufficient for your cells to be happy. Okay, so because of that, then your body is able to control how much energy is available to those cells at any one time. Okay, uh, and so therefore your your body will uh, release sugar into the bloodstream, but only a certain amount of sugar. Okay. Now, at rest, your body only allows there to be a maximum of five grams of sugar. So when, when, we, when we think about your, uh, your bloodstream is composed of five liters of blood, okay, in that five liters of blood, you will, if you were to remove the sugar, it would amount to only five grams. And that's what your body is happy with. Okay. Five grams, incidentally, is just over a teaspoon. Okay, and for people who uh, who measure their blood sugar, okay, and they measure their blood sugar in minimal millimoles per liter. This is what this is what MML sorry MMOL stands for millimoles uh, per liter of blood. Okay, <clears throat> so one teaspoon of sugar, five grams, which amounts to five millimoles. Now. We know that too much sugar is dangerous to health, but why? Okay. Now, if resting, your body is happy with a maximum of five sugar, five grams of sugar, so a teaspoon of sugar in, in the complete five liters of blood. <clears throat> Going beyond five grams is dangerous to your health. We know that. Okay. Now, if your body is unable to maintain this level. Okay, so if, if your body is not able to maintain this constant supply of five grams of, of sugar in your blood at any one time, and then what happens is that the glucose management, the ability to manage glucose is deteriorating. Okay, and this when it deteriorates, this is when diabetes can develop. Okay, now before before anybody has full-blown diabetes, they will start to suffer some of the symptoms of diabetes, okay? Um, <clears throat> anybody who has diabetes or anybody who knows of somebody who has diabetes will know these symptoms, okay? Thirst, for example, feeling tired, losing weight, okay? Uh, having to go to the toilet more often because your bladder fills more quickly, okay? Uh, more frequent infections, and uh, the wounds heal slower, okay? So these are the common uh, symptoms of diabetes. And some of these symptoms people start to feel before they even have full-blown diabetes, okay? They might start to develop th feeling thirsty, for example, feeling tired, and even start to lose weight, okay? So these are the, these are the earliest signs of uh, people who, who are perhaps in danger of developing diabetes in the very near future. Not all sugars are sweet, okay? Carbohydrates are sugars, and carbohydrates don't, well, most carbohydrates don't taste sweet, okay? Starch, any any, any cereal is, uh, is made up of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, starches themselves are not, are not uh, sweet, okay? Here we have a, a single molecule of glucose. This is just the chemical uh, configuration of a molecule of glucose, and this is what starch looks like. Okay, you can see that starch, okay, is made up of molecules of glucose. Now, the reason why this tastes sweet and this doesn't is because this can easily fit into your sweet tasting receptors in your tongue, whereas this, and this, I'm, I'm only I'm only showing three molecules of sugar here, but this, in reality, goes for uh, they're, they're they're hundreds of molecules long, all attached together. So these molecules are attached together. And these don't fit into your sweet tasting receptors, so they don't taste sweet. Okay, they have to be broken up, and your 
uh, digestive system does break starch up to produce glucose. Okay. Your digestive system starts to break the carbohydrates up, such as such as starch. Let's just say this is starch. And remember, this this these are uh, this square bracket just represents that that there's lots and lots of these uh, glucose molecules joined together. Okay, not just three, but just just for presentation purposes, just we'll just keep it as three. But um, these carbohydrates are broken down by your digestive system. Okay, um, and there's uh, if anybody's interested, it's the 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 enzymes. Or the enzyme rather responsible for breaking starch are amylases. Okay, your saliva contains amylases, and your pancreas will release amylases. Okay, so um, in your mouth, your amylase will be released. It'll start to break it down. Okay, and and then it'll be completely digested once it once it reaches the small intestine. Okay, it reaches the small intestine. It gets fully digested, so you start to get uh, the production of individual glucose residues. These then can be transported from the small intestine into the bloodstream. Okay, so what happens next is that your all this glucose, this new found glucose in your bloodstream, okay, travels into your well, obviously through the through the bloodstream, and it it eventually gets to your pancreas. Okay, so the pancreas then senses that there's this large. Uh, once it reaches the pancreas, it, it realizes there's a large concentration of glucose. And remember, your body is only happy with five grams of sugar um, in your blood at any one time. Yeah, you, know, you may have consumed something like, say, let's say, a can of Coke, which will contain 30 grams. Uh, if it's not diet, <clears throat> then it'll contain 30 grams of sugar. Uh, so that's six times more sugar than your body's happy with. And it eventually gets into the bloodstream. It's dangerous. Okay, too much sugar in the blood is dangerous. Your uh, your brain, your pancreas recognizes this. So in response to the increasing amounts of glucose coming in, it starts to then put into action a, me a method to reduce the number of glucose from the bloodstream and remove it from the bloodstream into cells. Now, in order for that to happen, your pancreas will release insulin molecules. Okay, so these these uh, these yellow circles are representations of insulin molecules. Now, the amount of insulin that's released depends upon the concentration of the pancreas senses. Okay, uh, a lot of glucose, a lot of sugar, then a lot more insulin. Less glucose, less insulin. Okay, it kind of it, it's, it knows how to calculate how much insulin to release uh, in order to bring the uh, the level of sugar in the bloodstream down to normal levels. Okay, so so how does this work then? Okay, now what does insulin do? Insulin uh, instructs the cells, okay, to remove the sugar from the bloodstream and into the cells. Okay, now this is the way it works. So in our cells, okay, this is just a typical cell, okay, with all the different components within the cell. These are what we call receptors, okay, and you have you have different types of receptors all around, um, scattered throughout the what we call the the border of the cell. This is the cell membrane of the cell, represented here in green, okay. And these receptors transverse or traverse rather the um, the membrane. And uh, we, what, what, what I'm showing here is the specific receptor for insulin. There are hundreds and hundreds of other receptors for other types of molecules. Okay, but what happens is that the insulin will eventually bind to the receptor. The receptor then, okay, will will uh, uh, will receive this signal and undergo a series of uh, reactions inside the cell. Okay, and eventually what will happen is that that will allow the specific what we call glucose glucose channels, okay, glucose channels to be transported from inside the cell to the cell membrane, okay, and obviously you have um, a lot more coming to the cell membrane, and this then allows the glucose to go inside the cell. Glucose can't just enter the cell because there's this barrier here. It needs a specific uh, channel, okay, for glucose to move in. Okay, so once we have these specific glucose channels embedded within the membrane, this is when glucose can enter the cell. 
Okay. Without these channels, um, we can't really get glucose inside the cells. Okay. Now, not all cells are insulin dependent. There are many cells which don't require insulin for these for this sort of uh, sequence of events to happen. Brain cells, for example, okay, uh, doesn't don't need insulin. Heart cells don't need insulin. Okay, they will accept. They they will have these uh, um, these channels embedded in anywhere. Okay, to allow glucose to enter. Okay, but there are some cell types uh, such as liver cells skeletal muscle cells fat cells these are insulin dependent okay so so liver cells muscle cells and fat cells these are major targets for insulin dependent glucose intake okay uh, glucose is then used for energy in all cells okay so brain cells heart cells liver cells skin cells all require glucose for a a good a quick supply of energy okay but in these cells liver cells and muscle cells and fat cells they can be converted into other other storage substances for energy okay but, so glucose can be uh, converted to produce glycogen in the liver okay and muscle cells okay and uh, if there's excessive amounts of glucose this glucose Will be converted to glycogen in the in the liver cells and muscle cells, but also converted to fat in liver cells and fat cells. Okay, and fat is is a means of storage. Glycogen is a bit like starch. Okay, so it's just multiple units of glucose all joined together. Okay, and that, that can be stored in the liver cells and muscle cells for for quick access to energy whenever needed that this whole uh, management of glucose is quite a complex process okay requiring multiple steps now if this process of glucose management can't be maintained okay this is when you're in danger of developing diabetes okay the, your body is has, a, has this fantastic ability uh, to deal with all kinds of problems okay now if you're a person who likes to eat lots of carbohydrates and lots of sweet things what you're doing is you're putting your body in quite a bit of stress okay because you're telling your body to constantly lower uh, the level of sugar in your blood now the body can do that for a long long time okay but at some point it sort of the the, the ability sort of slowly erodes away so uh, your your body's ability to maintain uh, sh constant sugar levels um, erodes away, okay? But it only erodes away if you abuse it for for a long, long time, okay? Sometimes what happens is that the cells, so this erosion um, sometimes comes about because the cells can no longer respond appropriately to insulin. Okay, so they can't respond appropriately to insulin. So insulin normally binds to the insulin receptor, and then you start the sequence of events, and then glucose enters the cell. But uh, what happens is that um, by exposing your body to constantly high levels of of sugar, okay, erodes the body's ability to keep this system working properly. Okay, now when when this situation comes about that uh, your cells just don't respond to insulin like they used to, this is called this is this is type again type two diabetes because but it's due to not 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 so that the um, pancreas doesn't produce insulin. It's because your pancreas is producing sufficient amounts of insulin, but your cells don't respond to it, respond to it. So we call this insulin resistance. Okay. Sometimes uh, this pancreas just doesn't produce enough insulin. Okay, so that's that can that can happen as well. Okay. Now it doesn't necessarily mean that this that the pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin. Sometimes what happens is that the it's not able to 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 release the insulin that it, that it that it uh, produces. Okay. Some of the tubes that um, that lead to the bloodstream get blocked by fat. Okay, uh, and people who are, um, that's why people who are obese 
or overweight, okay, um, when they develop type 2 diabetes, if it's because of um, if it's because of the second problem here that the pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin, this can be reversed. Okay, if they and it's been shown that uh, certain dietary restrictions, okay, exercise, basically uses up the fat, the fat that blocked up the uh, the tubes that uh, release the insulin. Once they get unblocked, suddenly uh, the whole insulin levels uh, go back to normal. So in this case, di type 2 diabetes can be reversed. Okay. This development of uh, diabetes is specifically type 2 diabetes. Okay. Now there are there are if it's type 2 then what's type 1? Okay. Type 1 is this. Okay, and type one makes up about ten percent of all diabetic patients. So it's so one in every ten people or one in every ten diabetics is type one. Okay, and this is usually what we call an autoimmune condition, meaning that your your own immune system attacks your own cells. Okay, now there are special cells in the pancreas that are, that are, that produce insulin. Okay, and these cells are called beta cells, and they're the ones which your immune system, for some reason, recognizes being dangerous and foreign, and so they start to attack it. They start to attack those beta cells. Okay, and remember, those beta cells were involved with producing insulin, so you destroy those, and therefore you can't produce insulin. Okay. Uh, and this tends to happen at an early age, so before, you know when you're born, um, or at a very early age. Okay, and this is this is uh, type one diabetes. Okay, and type two, which we've just talked about, is this is the major type of diabetes. Okay, so this is kind of inherited. This can be also inherited to some extent, but this is uh, much more much more of a genetic component. This is genetic and environmental. Okay, um, and we're all we're all prone to type two diabetes. Okay, so and it's basically caused by reduction in the pancreas's ability to produce and release insulin. Okay, the type two. Uh, it can also be caused by cells not responding to insulin insulin resistance, which we just talked about. Okay, it can also be inherited. Can, it can also be inherited, but in many cases, it it can be reversed okay so although it's inherited to some extent okay um, but because it's more of an environmental impact than 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 genetic okay you can overcome that and so it can be reversed okay and it can be reversed by losing abdominal weight okay so losing abdominal weight you lose the fat around your belly area okay and <clears throat> around your stomach area and all the fat all this all this what we call visceral fat gets used up um, and <clears throat> and those tubes which were blocked with the fat okay they, that that gets burnt away and uh, it can result in the uh, the reversal of diabetes the next thing I wanted to do was to actually go and start to explain the symptoms of diabetes Okay. Now, before I do that, let's just uh, just take a quick look at what the symptoms were. Okay, so these are the symptoms. Okay, feeling thirsty, feeling tired, losing weight. Okay, and bladder filling more quickly. Uh, infections happening much more frequently, and if you do develop a wound, the wound uh, heals much slower. Okay, so these are the common symptoms of diabetes. Now, let's go through these one by one. Okay, so the first one, feeling tired. Okay, so the feeling of uh, fatigue is quite a complex uh, process, actually. Um, if we uh, look at fatigue, okay, or tiredness in general, it it can be due to many different reasons, okay, and it's way beyond this presentation to explain uh, the different reasons for feeling tired. Um, if anybody is interested, um, drop a comment uh, in the comment section, and I will see if I can perhaps make a, a, um, a different presentation to explain the different reasons for feeling tired. Okay, but sticking to the, um, the context of of, um, of diabetes. 
Okay, let me just uh, skip to the next bit. Okay, so we know that feeling tired or fatigue is in uh, is is actually a very complex process, and even just looking at diabetes, it's a complex process. There's many molecular processes that go on inside cells that are, are affected by um, high sugar levels in the blood. Okay, um, and uh, sugar not being able to get inside cells, so. We can go. We can, in another presentation, we can, we can perhaps go through the different processes. Okay, but to keep it simple and to keep it in the context of diabetes, um, we can simply say that because sugar um, is involved with providing us with energy, okay, because sugar can't get into in, inside cells, okay, um, sugar uh, cells can't use the energy. Okay, so just keeping it simple then, feeling tired could be simply because we don't have enough energy. Okay, now we know that sugar gives us energy. Okay, diabetes reduces how much sugar gets inside the cells. Okay, remember sugar is needed uh, for our cells for energy. Okay, so if the cells can't use the sugar, okay, I know there are other fuel sources. Uh, if cells, but let's just keep it simple. If sugar, if uh, cells can't get the sugar, Inside cells, they get tired. We are made up of cells. You know, our cells make up tissues. Tissues make up organs. Organs make up uh, different organ systems, and the different organs organ systems come together to make the organism. Okay, so we are an organism, and we're a collection of cells. And if cells get tired, we get tired. And let's just keep it that simple. But remember, there are uh, much. There is much more to this than just simply saying that. Okay, but we can distill it to this sentence: If cells get tired, we get tired. Okay. Now, in terms of um, um, the bladder filling more quickly, okay, I hope um, you have an understanding of how water moves, and it, even if you don't, I'll, I'll try to explain it. Okay, water moves from one place to the next uh, through a process called osmosis inside the body. That is. Okay, through a blood uh, through a, a process called osmosis, and anything that's dissolved in blood in fluid, okay, ha can actually pull water towards it. So if we think about salt, okay, um, water moves uh, to where there's a higher salt concentration, for example, because water, salt is able to pull water. Now anything that's dissolved in water is able to pull water towards itself. Uh, so sugar glucose is dissolved in um, in blood, okay, and therefore it also can pull water towards itself, okay. Now just hang on to that thought because that'll be the basis of explaining uh, why the bladder fills more quickly, and also uh, why people feel more thirsty. Okay, right then. So if I just uh, because so uh, the, the, these are the sequence of events that are hopefully that helps to explain why the bladder fills more quickly. So we know that sugar in people who are diabetic does not enter the cell, okay? Um, because the cells don't respond to insulin or because the cells uh, or the pancreas doesn't produce insulin, okay? So therefore, what happens is that the sugar stays in the blood. It doesn't, it doesn't go from the blood inside the cells. It stays in the blood, okay? So blood then becomes rich in glucose for a longer period of time, okay? That eventually... That blood is taken eventually to the kidneys. I mean, you know, blood is circulated, so it goes from the, it goes, it travels to all the different organs, and at at what at some point it'll get to the kidneys. Kidneys' responsibility is to is to basically to filter blood, uh, you know, get rid of things that we don't need, and reabsorb things that we do need. Okay, now sugar is actually filtered out from the blood, but the kidneys know that uh, sugar is extremely important it's a, it's a good supply of energy so we don't we don't want to lose sugar into the urine okay so it tries to so it, normally what would happen is it would it would it would basically reabsorb all the sugar so the kidneys would filter it out and then reabsorb it all back into the blood okay now in diabetic patients okay uh, there's too much sugar Okay, because the sugar isn't taken inside the cells, it stays in the actual bloodstream. The kidneys cannot deal with that much sugar. 
okay? So it will try to reabsorb all the sugar that it can, okay? But it won't be able to reabsorb all the sugar. So what happens then? Sugar then becomes part of the urine, okay? Because remember that all the stuff that's filtered is potentially the urine. The stuff, uh, some stuff can be reabsorbed back into the blood, okay? But all the stuff that isn't reabsorbed becomes part of the urine. So then sugar, the sugar, the sugar that couldn't couldn't be reabsorbed, okay, uh, becomes part of the urine. Now sugar, remember what I said. Anything that dissolves in water, anything that is a solute, okay. So anything that dissolves in water in a fluid is a solute, okay. And anything that does does dissolve, what it basically does, it pulls water towards itself, okay. So because sugar becomes part of the urine, sugar then pulls the water um in into the bladder okay so it pulls the uh, it pulls the water from the blood again through osmosis to come to become part of the urine okay so here's a here's a little diagram just to sort of demonstrate illustrate that a little, a little bit so it, in normal sugar levels okay this these blue dots here represent the sugar okay uh th th here's the bloodstream they get taken to the kidneys uh, and the kidneys basically filter the um, the sugar molecules out, and then it goes back into the blood. Okay, so out into the into the bladder enters no sugar. Okay, so you have um, here's the urine represented here in yellow. So the blood is filling up, and uh, there's no sugar in there. But where there's too much sugar, okay, okay, um, the kidney tries to reabsorb all of it, but it can't, and so some of it enters the urine. Okay, and as it as it's as it's pulled as it's lost into into the urine, it pulls water towards it. Okay, so the bladder fills more quickly because it's it's just pulling more water towards itself. Okay, it can uh, sugar can pull water better than the kidneys can reabsorb it. Okay, yeah, that's one way of thinking about it. Okay, so the bladder fills more quickly; it's more dilute. Okay. So you can see over here, the urine is concentrated, it's a bit more, more yellowish, okay? And it's less yellowish here, but also you would find glucose. Um, so in diabetic patients, you will, if you tested their urine, you would find uh, certain levels of, glu of glucose inside their urine, whereas normally you would not find any, okay? So this is just to illustrate um, the process of how sugar enters the urine, how it pulls water, and how it it leads to the bladder filling more, uh, <clears throat> more quicker. Okay, so thirst then becomes easy to explain, doesn't it? Because you're losing more water, um, it makes more sense that you would feel more thirsty. But there is there is a process by which this happens. Okay, so because glucose pulls water into the bladder, water is being lost from the body. Okay, so water is being lost. Okay, water is needed to maintain health of cells and tissues. Uh, it's very important in blood pressure. Okay, and obviously many of the processes as well. Okay, so we know how important water is. They, your body maintains water levels. Okay, so what will happen is that um, because you're losing water, your mouth will become dry, your blood pressure will drop. Okay, even the blood flow rate to the kidneys will drop as well and all these things combined okay uh, all these things combined the brain senses this drop in water levels okay and then stimulates the perception of thirst okay stimulates the perception of thirst so that's basically in a nutshell why you feel thirsty next um complication of or symptoms of diabetes that I wanted to talk about was losing weight okay now this makes a sense a bit easier okay now if you think about it okay most energy for cells comes from glucose okay so glucose uh, sorry cells require glucose but the problem in diabetes is that glucose can't get inside cells so then the question is well how the well, how, you know, how do cells then um, fulfill all their biochemical reactions if if it can't get uh, energy from glucose because it can't get inside cells? Well, as you know, okay, there are uh, other sources of energy. You know, we can use proteins, 
but we can also use fats. The next best source of energy are, in fact, fats. Okay, so once you once you run out of glucose or glycogen, and then your body starts to starts to uh, um, resort to fats. Now that's not entirely true. Okay, uh, you don't have to run out of glycogen. Um, your body will use fats. Um, but it will use fats a lot slower if there's if there's glucose present. If there's um, less glucose present, uh, present, and then it will it will resort to fats much quicker. Okay, so it's really about if if you want to lose fat around the belly area, is to get rid of the um, is to burn all this stored glucose inside the liver inside the muscle, so that it does resort to fats much better. Okay, so the cells can use fats. Okay. So the body resorts to uh, fats for energy. Now, fats in the liver, because that's where it's stored. Okay, uh, that, that's where that's that's one organ where it's stored. In the muscle, it's also stored, but a lot of it's of, of the excessive amount of fat is stored in the abdomen. Okay, so that then starts to get used up. Okay, the fat around the abdomen starts to get used up, and then can you see how it makes sense that we lose weight because we're using up the fats? Okay, so fats diminish and we lose weight. Okay, now there's a lot more to that than just this, but I I don't want to make this video too long just to keep it simple. Okay, right then, um, let's look at uh, infections. Okay, uh, now people with diabetes have infections much more frequently. Okay, now in order to talk about infections, let me let me let me say a little bit about the immune system in general okay now infections are dealt by your immune system you get an infection you get a stimulation of the immune system and then it deals with any kind of uh, virus or bacteria or or fungi okay now the comp the immune system is quite a complex system okay it's uh, it's what we call multifactorial in other words there's different components to the immune system there are chemicals which your immune system releases called interleukins there are antibodies that your immune system produces and there are uh, many different types of immune cells and all of these different components come to, and there are even more than this but these different components come together to effectively fight off a, any kind of pathogen okay now um to keep again to keep it simple in people with diabetes okay the excessive amounts of glucose in the blood actually impair so many of these different components okay it's been shown uh, in many in many uh, uh, research articles that uh, chemicals which promote uh, effective um promote the effective stimulation of the immune system okay they're reduced in people with diabetes the antibodies that the immune system produces they just don't work as well okay uh, because there's a there's actually a reaction between the glucose the excessive glucose and the antibodies themselves and that uh, impairs them somewhat okay and it also impairs the cells ability to respond to the infection okay so excessive amounts of glucose has an impact on all three components okay so the concentration of these chemicals reduces of the antibodies reduces and of specific cells is reduced the, the quantity uh, how they respond and how they behave okay are all altered um and that shouldn't be happening okay you need all these three components and others as well uh, sort of working um, in unison, okay, working together to fight off the, uh, to the to fight off the infection, and if any of these is impaired or all of them are impaired, as in the case of diabetes, then you can see why uh, infections are much more frequent. So it, it's been well documented that uh, diabetic patients suffer um, or different kinds of infections much more uh, commonly than than um, people who don't have diabetes okay so they're much more prone to for example developing respiratory infections so okay pneumonia for example flu 
Okay. Uh, tuberculosis, these are all infections of the uh, respiratory system, and diabetic patients have much more frequency of these infections. In fact, uh, diabetic patients okay, uh, are six times more likely to require hospitalization from flu than um, people without diabetes. Okay, urinary tract infections are much more common. Um, well, first of all, obviously, um, there's more there's more sugar in the urine okay sugar is, is is not only a source of energy for us but also for bacteria as well okay and fungi so you get a lot more um uh, bacteria being able to grow in the urine okay and and populate uh, the urinary system or the urinary tract okay um and then there's gastrointestinal and liver infections you know stomach ulcers hepatitis B and C. Okay, these are all diseases uh, or infections much more common in diabetic patients. Okay. Um, I, I could talk about many other, but uh, I think uh, without extending it too much, I think I'll stop it there in terms of naming the different infections. Okay. Right then. Okay, so the next bit follows on quite nicely to infections, and that's the process of wound healing. Okay, um, the wound healing process in diabetic patients is a lot slower. Okay, now again, uh, in terms of wound healing, not is not only is the immune system responsible for fighting off infection, but it's also involved with healing wounds. Okay, so we know that the immune system is impaired. Okay, so it makes sense that uh, wound healing is is slowed down. Okay, it's, it's also impaired. Okay, so we know that the immune system performs less adequately in diabetic patients. Okay, so remember it it performs less adequately. So uh, there's an adequate level of performance. Okay, which is required for for normal normal uh, healing of wounds, but because the immune system is impaired, okay, it performs less adequately. Um, a hallmark of wound healing is increased blood vessel development at the site of the wound. Now, okay. Now, if you think about this, when you have a wound, um, there's um, what we need to do is we need to deliver more more of the immune system to the wounded area because there's potentially you know pathogens entering, so they need to, they need to be eliminated, uh, destroyed, and, and eliminated. Okay. Now. How we get immune, your more immune system cells and chemicals to the site of the wound is to develop more uh, um, microscopic blood vessels called capillaries. Okay, now the production of capillaries um, in in um, in biology we call that um, angiogenesis. So okay, so it's a genesis is the uh, the birth of new blood vessels. Okay, so at the site of the wound, naturally you would get more blood vessels. That's why when when you have a, a wound, it looks more red. If you look at the skin, it looks more red. It's because there's just not more blood vessels at the site. Okay, bringing in more blood, uh, because in the blood is are your immune cells. Okay, so uh, one of the hallmarks of wound healing is the increased blood vessel development at the site of the wound. So okay. Um, and we know that it's important for the delivery of wound healing chemicals in cells. Okay. Now, in diabetic patients, this development of blood vessels is impaired. Okay. So you get a wound, um, and basically the the immune system is impaired. Uh, first of all, you're not you're not you're not you're not combating and eliminating the pathogens that are coming in. Okay, so bacteria are populating that wounded area, but not only that, the wound itself is is healing much slower. Okay, so remember, in order to repair the wound, you need more uh, blood vessels at the site of the wound. Okay, so because you have a reduction in the blood vessel development, therefore you, in terms of uh, healing the wound, okay, that's also a lot slower. Okay, so that's basically it. That's 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 all I wanted to talk about uh, with regards to uh, 
uh, diabetes and uh, the common symptoms. That's what I really wanted to focus on was the symptoms and just to give you an idea of how, uh, how the body deals with sugar, okay, how important sugar is, okay, uh, but how also how dangerous sugar can be in excessive amounts, okay. So if I just now go back and we go back all the way to the beginning, okay, here we are, okay. So you can see that we we talked about diabetes. We, we explained what diabetes is. We defined it. We looked at how important sugar was for energy purposes, okay, and how sugar stimulates the production of insulin, okay. We look, we also talked about uh, how insulin plays a role in sugar management, okay, and then we at the end talked about the different symptoms of diabetes and we explained, uh, <clears throat> sorry, we. Okay, and so we explained um, how these different symptoms come about. Okay, so that's it. Uh, nothing more really I wanted to say. Um, if you did find this video useful, uh, please consider subscribing. Um, please leave a comment of what you thought. Um, I, I mean, the pro this, this is a new channel, a, a relatively new channel, and... Um, so I have to. Um, I I would like to produce more videos uh, to help people understand more about uh, science. Just to, uh, one 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 of the jobs of of um, of, of a scientist is basically to reach out to other people, okay, and pass on very useful pass on some some of this information so that you 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 become more aware. Um, so. I mean, I am in the process of producing more videos, so I'd like to know what sort of videos you would like to learn about or what sort of topics you would like to learn about or learn more about, okay? So do leave comments. They're very useful to me. Um, and uh, I think I'll stop it there. I don't really want to blabber on too much, so um, I wish you all the best. Um, enjoy the rest of the day, and I will see you again sometime soon. Okay, bye-bye.